Hello friends, it's Lindsay Satterfield here on the Productivity Power page on Facebook. And I wanna to talk today, um, or what I wanna talk about today was inspired by a few things. And the first thing is yesterday, I got a delivery from Amazon. So that's not that shocking. <laughs> but when I opened it up, I had forgotten that I had ordered what I saw in the box. And what it was, and you might have seen this on the page, it was this book, which you can't really see on the live, I know, because it's backwards. But it's Kobe Bryant's book that he wrote and was published two years ago called Mamba Mentality. So in the wake of the tragic passing of Kobe Bryant and the other passengers on his helicopter, I um, became super curious. And of course, I was shocked when I heard the news. I am not a big base basketball um, fan. Uh, that said, I am a big fan of athletes. I'm very curious about athletes and inspired by athletes. And so just in the wake of that tragedy, I wanted to learn more about Kobe Bryant. And I came upon this book and I ordered it and I completely forgot that I had done that. And so when I opened the book, it kind of hit me. And yesterday I spent some time uh, really devouring this book, going through this book as much as possible. It is a beautiful, beautiful book. And um, I wanna take more time going through it, but it's really, um, it's a, it, the subtitle is How I Play, Mamba Mentality, How I Play. And the lessons in it are so transferable to performance of any kind. That's what's um, so wonderful to study about masters in any field is how they play and to absorb sort of the mindset, the technique that they use, the approach they use for their performance. So it was incredibly inspiring to go through this and I really have just um, sort of gone on the surface level, just went through fairly quickly and I wanna take more time going through um, the book. That said, there's one impression that came out very strong, my sort of first impression in, in reading some of the different um, parts of the book and that is how curious Kobe Bryant was, how he was a student of his own performance. And that's incredibly inspiring to me. And I really see that um, this is where it's at. You know, even in his, you know, he described some of his, you know, the way he would prepare for a game and it would shift and it would change. So he didn't get locked into any external technique. In fact, there's some place I was, I was looking for it just before I came on here. There's some place in the book that I remember seeing last night that, um, you know, lots of players like to have their music and get in their zone and all of that. And um, he sometimes just really liked it just to be quiet or just to take in the sounds of the environment. But he didn't want people to hassle him about how he wasn't doing it. So he put his headphones on anyway, <laughs> and there'd be no music playing. So you know, I was just struck by how he was constantly inquiring about his own performance, the conditions of his own performance, what was needed. His preparation changed from game to game depending upon, you know, what, where, you know, how his, how his, uh, how his energy was, how the environment was, just a, a whole host of factors. And I think it's so easy to, um, when we're thinking about it, looking at it from a bigger performance point of view, it's so easy to just lock into an external system and then just operate from there without really becoming masterful about what are the conditions that allow you to perform well. So I wanted to, to bring this up because, um, and I've called this, I think, know thyself, um, because recently in the past, I would say week to 10 days, I've had, let's see, four conversations, and I won't reveal with who, but I've had four different conversations that all speak to this idea of how we can, we can lose connection 
with ourself and what the impact of that is on our performance and our overall sense of fulfillment, happiness, impact. So the first two were quite similar and they happened, you know, sort of at different times. One was a more historical story and one was a more current emerging story. And that was about um, each of these people separately spoke about a story of working really hard and sort of um, in the context of all the expectations on them, all the things that they thought they should be doing and um, working very hard at that. And then over time, as you keep taking on all those shoulds, all those external um, expectations, you lose contact with who in the heck are you? <laughs> like, where do you stand in any of this? And when you lose touch with where you stand, it is difficult to have impact. It's difficult to perform well over time. You can handle it in the, you know, keeping up with people's expectations for a while, but eventually the stress of that um, allows our performance or um, spurs our performance to break down to some degree. And um, both of them were at sort of different places of looking at the importance of really getting back in touch, sort of this internal locus of control of who am I, what do I think, what do I believe, what works well for me. Um, so that was those two stories. And then there was another story I heard recently of um, someone I'm coaching who has, is in, has been um, in this small business or relatively small firm for um, some time and is a really pivotal player in the firm and has a um, boss who's very, um, who has an energy level maybe different than hers that's just sort of around the clock. And the expectations um, are always on her to keep working harder and harder and harder. And again, she's lost a little bit of touch with what actually allows me to perform well because it isn't staying until nine or 10 o'clock every night. So she was looking at strategies for how to take control over that again, looking at her own performance. And then the fourth example was someone who, really sort of a simple practical example of this, was she said, you know, in the afternoon, I really don't feel like I, you know, get much, you know, done. I have this like slump and I'm just, you know, really, if there isn't like a big deadline, I feel like I'm not really very productive. And I think she was surprised by my response because really what I pointed her to is the fact that we have, and we know this, energy cycles, and that maybe she needs to sync up her energy cycles of the day with the activity and not actually, you know, what we do is push through. When our energy sags, we end up pushing through. Sometimes we need to, but we can also look at how can I work with my own natural energy rhythm in order to get, um, to be productive and to have an impact. And, um, and what we came up with is a great thing that I learned actually from David Allen, maybe 20 years ago or more, he said that he had a list of what he called brain dead things to do. So it was just a running list of things that would actually, you know, be productive, be good to do, but that didn't require the same kind of energy. So these are all examples of how we can get out of touch with our, um, our own performance, what it takes for us individually to perform well and not keep so focused on um, what other people are doing, what other people are saying, et cetera, et cetera. So what can happen, one of the symptoms that I've seen of people not being in touch with their own performance and aware of their own performance and the levers of their own performance is having difficulty making decisions is one because if you don't build up that internal locus of control, then, and you depend so much on all these externals, then it's difficult. Should I do this or should I do that? What do they think? What do they think? What would happen if I did this? And so you kind of lose touch with how it is your own innate and well, um, uh, 
sort of tacit knowledge that you've developed over time over doing the work that you do, living the life that you live. So that's one symptom of sort of getting out of touch with yourself. And another is just plain old feeling extremely stressed and burdened. That's sort of the weight of the shoulds on your shoulders. Um, that I think that can be a symptom that you may be getting out of touch with where am I in relationship to my commitments, what I have on my plate, what I need to do, what I want to accomplish. So a couple things that you can do to get yourself sort of reconnected to know thyself in order to perform well, in order to be productive, in order to have the impact that you want. First of all, slow it down. <laughs> slow it on down. So slow down the pace because sometimes we get so ahead of our skis, so to speak, that we're not even caught up with how we feel emotionally. And remember, I've said many times, emotions are not a bug. They're a feature. They give good intel, but sometimes we're so ahead of ourselves, we don't even know how we feel about anything. Um, so that's one. Slow down. Just like catch your breath. Take a breath. Take a beat. <laughs> take a time out. The other is, and this might be surprising, is read, listen to podcasts sort of outside of your field, or it doesn't have to be, but a little bit, um, you know, just something else that you're interested in. I think, and, and that sounds odd if I'm talking about know thyself while you're going to read other people's words, but I think when we start to stimulate our own thinking, we get more clear about how we think, whether it's in fiction writing or nonfiction writing or listening to a podcast or listening to music or whatever it is, it's, it's cultivating this awareness of my own taste related to these ideas, related to this aesthetic or et cetera, et cetera. So expose yourself to other um, inputs, not as a way to, glom onto them and you know uh, lose touch with yourself, but as a way to really be a mirror to how it is, oh, what do I think about that? What do I think about that? This is a great exercise, which is write down what you believe, just a brainstorm of what you believe about any topic. Just write it down. Just what do I believe? What do I believe about my, my productivity? What do I believe about my work? What do I believe about anything? Uh, once we get more in touch with that, again, it, it brings us back to that internal locus of control. This is another um, conversation. Actually, it was a um, Instagram conversation that I had with a client of mine, <laughs> a, a DM, um, and she is working on her resume and uh, started looking at um, putting in the why, her why, instead of writing a resume and a cover letter like everybody does and they want to show what they did and all the things that are important, she positioned it according to her own passion, her own interest, her own beliefs. And when you do that, you can hang all that other stuff on it. So getting in touch with that is so important. Then here is um, journaling, great way to get to know yourself. Um, and I know it isn't for everyone, but if that appeals to you, write down a few notes and don't make it fancy, make it simple, make it easy. The other is, and this is really important when I'm working with clients about, you know, them about goal achievement or making progress on things that they care about, is building in reflection on performance. So that was so clear in Kobe Bryant's book. Like he was constantly, constantly observing his performance, observing everybody else's performance. In fact, there's a whole um, section in which, which is so interesting, in which he talks about various competitors and how, like specifically, how he would design his performance to work with that person's performance. Amazing. Anyhow, I digress. So really build into your, into your life and work a way of reflecting back on what just happened in a dispassionate way. And I talked about this in the last Facebook Live. Look at what went well, why did it go well? What did not go well? What was I not happy about? Whatever the question is. Um, what did I not achieve that I thought I would um, and why? So that's where you put in this curiosity that's so clear Kobe Bryant had and great performers have 
is being curious. Why? Why is that result? Not just doing the to-do list, but why did it work well? Why did it not work well? And then adjusting and tweaking your own performance so that you have this ongoing relationship with your own performance. So those are my um, suggestions for really looking at this whole idea of getting to of know thyself. Getting to know yourself is so critical and getting to know your strengths, your areas for um, sort of your learning edge, getting to know those things in really practical ways. And that takes slowing it down and taking a look. So I encourage you to do that in, and um, I encourage you to get the book. It's a great book. Um, I know you can't read it because it's backwards on the Facebook Live, but The Mumba Mentality, How I Play by Kobe Bryant, incredible book. So anyway, thanks for joining and um, yeah, just keep looking at your own performance, take notes and continue to evolve how it is that you um, work and live. I'll talk to you later. Bye.